Okay, welcome you guys. We're really glad to have everybody here. I'm really excited about tonight's webinar. And I'm excited, even more excited, to introduce our very special guest, Shay Lee. So our topic tonight is putting your strengths to work. We've been talking a lot about um, Gallup Strengths Finder, and it's just been so much fun. I, I first took my strengths um, in the summer of 2016, and I was just looking back at them. It's been exactly two years, and I've had some time to, um, to kind of play with them and really um, think on them, ponder on them, and just kind of dive a little bit deeper and looking at um, how my, my strengths kind of impact my life and who I am, but also in my relationships and how I work with others. And of course, in, in this doTERRA business. And so it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. Um, my number one strength is individualization. And so I really, one of the things that I really find fascinating is how everyone um, is unique and how each person has something really in, interesting um, and individual to offer and bring um, to, to this world, to this planet. Um, but especially but to doTERRA too. So um, I actually have a, a precursor webinar that you can watch that um, just kind of explains Gallup's and Strengths Finder in a little bit more detail. But today specifically, we're going to, this is almost like a step two from that. So this is um, really getting into putting your strengths to work for you. And so uh, with that, I just wanted to um, just highlight Shay here really quickly before I pass it over to her because she's our, she's our main highlight tonight. Um, she's been, Shay, so Shay Lee has been a strengths coach uh, for corporate teams, for leadership courses, for doTERRA business builders and couples, um, individuals since 2007. So she's had a lot of experience um, in this, like, like hands-on experience for over 10 years. Um, she's logged over 150 hours of coaching um, with original content and curriculum, and I got to have a session with her not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, and I, it was really enlightening. I really got a lot out of it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, she's been a doTERRA wellness advocate since 2011, and she is really passionate about merging strengths with doTERRA and uh, putting these, these two things together to see how everyone can flourish. So with that, Shay, I'm gonna turn the time over to you. Um, going to pin you first. And then I've got to make you, hold on, I've got to make you an administrator. Just going to take me a second. Sorry, guys, I'm not super, techie is not my in my strength. <laughs> See if I can figure this out here. Okay. Okay, see if that works for you, Shay. You are the host now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I'll, by the way, I'll be moderating. So if you guys have some questions, we wanted to, Shay and I were talking about this and we really want this to serve you. That's really our intention. We want everyone to get a lot out of this. So if you have questions, type them in the chat box and I'll try to interject um, and interrupt <laughs> Shay as appropriately. Um, and we'll, we'll try to get those questions answered. If they're big and meaty, we might save them to the end, but we'll just kind of see, see how we go with that. All right. Awesome. So. Yeah, cool. take it away. All right, let me just share my screen with y'all. All right, anyone see that? Cool. Oh, okay, now I can't see you. Okay, maybe if I leave it like that, where you can still kind of see the bar, can you guys all read the slides still? Because that way I can still see all your faces. Is that yeah. okay? Can you all see that? Yeah. yeah. Does it, will it cover your slides or are you okay with that? Well, no. So <laughs> actually, okay, well, I've got two screens. However, it works easiest for you. On one screen and then this is on the other. So as long as y'all can see this, then we're good to go. So yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay, thank you for that intro and thank you so much for having me. I am so thrilled to be here with y'all this evening. You hear the y'all, I'm in Texas, so. Um, but uh, what we're gonna be sharing about today is putting your strengths to work. And I, like Amy said, I took the test about 12 years ago and I had always really struggled with kind of understanding what my giftings were and, and how they were to, to play out. I struggled a lot with insecurity and then feeling that high of like, I'm doing what I meant to do, but it never came together until I took the Strengths Finder test. It was such a catalyst for driving me into teaching and coaching, and then my passion to have others kind of find that same freedom with themselves that I had found. 
shortly after that, in uh, 2011, a really good friend of mine who had been sharing oils with me, sketchy oils as we know now, <laughs> um, she switched to doTERRA and pulled me along with her. And oh man, I, I like if I listed all of the health things that have been reconciled for me, it would take forever. But um, we never looked back. And uh, so I, I'm going to show you a little bit about my why, because we always talk about the why. Hey, Shay, can yes. I have you put your slides just a little further to the left on your screen? Yes. And then that way, there, now we can see them all. I think our faces were covering them just oh, a little bit. Perfect. Okay, cool. Is that good for everyone? Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So here's, here's my whys. Uh, this is my husband, Anthony, and that's my son, Rain. Um, he's uh, going to be a year and a half. Uh, but doing doTERRA has just been this incredible blessing. And ah, I, I'm so pumped that y'all are taking time to spend time with strengths because there is no greater group to spend time focusing on strengths than people who are in doTERRA because I've never been part of an organization that so champions that in itself already. It's the perfect marriage. So get excited, get pumped because this is the best. So um, as I'm, yeah, kind of like Amy said, especially for those of you who just joined, um, I really love getting feedback and answering questions along the way or even clarifying things. So please feel free to, to write things down and Amy will jump in there. And I have a couple spots where I'm going to stop and ask if there's any questions too. So please give some feedback. So uh, here's an outline of what we are going to be covering today. Um, we are going to kind of do a quick refresher of the assessment to kind of get us back in the mindset. Um, and then we're going to be talking about understanding your strengths, investing in your strengths, and then addressing our weaknesses. So I, I see a couple of faces there. Um, how many of y'all present have actually been able to take the Strengths Finder assessment? Yeah, great. Oh, look at this. Look at all these hands. This is awesome. Wonderful. Well, for those of you who haven't, don't fear. Still so glad that you're here, and I know that there's going to be things you're going to be able to take away. Um, just like Amy said, um, I, this is kind of the 201 class to her 101 webinar that she did. It's chock full of incredible information. So if you haven't seen that, really encourage you to go back. It's kind of the heart of doTERRA with a great overview of, um, of Gallup's strengths. So we're going to kind of jump to the advanced class here all together. Um, but just for quick reference, um, if you have not, you can take the test by buying the book, which is this, the StrengthsFinder 2.0. Um, it has a code in the back, so don't buy the book used because someone will have already used the code. Um, but this is just a great resource to have because if you're coaching people on your teams, uh, to have a quick reference for all the strengths, I find really valuable. Um, but also, this is super cool, especially if you've just taken the top five. Um, on their website, you can get the full list of your 34 strengths in order, which is an amazing resource just for, for reference and for a greater understanding. And it's on sale right now, which is neat. Um, but yeah, you can take the, the basic test online and all of that is found on Gallup. So that's how you can get involved if you haven't gotten involved yet. So... What we are really here tonight is because I want to help you discover some very practical ways to bring your strengths into your business and find success and fulfillment in maybe ways you didn't even know were possible. But before we start, I want us all to kind of like visualize for a moment. Think about your own situation. Think about the areas that you see room for most improvement with your business. Where do you see room for the, the most improvement that you need? In doTERRA, we talk about mindset all the time. This is why strengths and doTERRA go so hand in hand, is because we are championing our leaders to have a mindset that sets you up for success, for growth, and that focuses on goals that you can achieve. But 
and no shame here, how many of you, when I just asked you where you saw room for growth, you thought about places that you actually like need to improve upon, like kind of your weaknesses? Yeah, yeah, a couple of you. I think when we think about the places with greatest growth, our culture tells us, look at the places where you're weak. Look at the places that you are not strong. For some reason, we seem to value people who can do it all. If you've, if you've recently been on the job hunt and you look for what employers are looking for, they want everything. And it's like, who, who even has all of this? And what we are missing out is celebrating specialization because no one is an island. No one's meant to do this alone. We're meant to do things as teams. And so that's what StrengthsFinder is all about, is creating a new culture, not of just trying to drag along and be good at everything, but to be really strong and contribute what you do best. Because if you watched Amy's, there's like no one and even one in 33 million people who even has the same, same strengths as you, the same top five as you. So pretty amazing. So the, the kind of the basis of StrengthsFinder is this, for those of you who are not totally familiar. It's, it was created to explore what would happen if people spent most of their time focusing on and investing in their strengths rather than fixing their weaknesses. And this is something that Amy shared in hers too, but this is a great jumping off point for us because it's exactly what we're going to be talking about. So this, this idea that StrengthsFinder themes actually represent potential. Your themes don't represent a strength until you're doing it consistently to provide near perfect performance over time. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not doing most anything perfectly in my life. But it's a, this concept that we need to put in the work to understand and practice and develop the strengths that we have, the skills that we have to move it to that place of consistency and perfection. So I'm gonna tell you a little story, and this is a little embarrassing, but um, one of my top strengths is communication. And people who are strong in communication are great at taking their thoughts and putting, putting it into words so that people can understand and be motivated. Um, but the first couple times I ever started teaching, I bombed it. It has taken me thousands of hours to hone my skills, to find my ideal audience, uh, to find what method of preparation and even what method of presentation were best for me. <laughs> so one of the first times that I was ever just teaching in general, um, I was teaching some college students about how when they left our university program, how they could succeed and continue their growth and progress that they've achieved while in a program. And as I was preparing, I saw a lot of parallels to the story of the Lord of the Rings. Any y'all familiar of J.R. Tolkien, like Lord of the Rings story? Some of you. It's a book and a movie. <laughs> this is a perfect example. Only one person raised their hand. You might see where the story is going. I ended up creating this whole teaching based off of this comparison to this pop culture reference of Lord of the Rings. And I got really pumped about it. They're going to be so excited. It's going to be so relevant. <laughs> And I entered the class and I started off by saying, all right, so who here is familiar with Lord of the Rings? Out of 50 people, four people raised their hand. <laughs> it was a total disaster. <laughs> Had I prepared- That's tragic. <laughs> it was tragic. Now it's funny. Then it wasn't funny. <laughs> um, you know, it, it ended up being kind of comical, but the truth is, did I prepare really well? Yes. Was it a good lesson? The two people who came up to me after who knew Lord of the Rings, they thought it was good. Um, but, but had I created a successful, perfect performance? No, absolutely not. After a lot of time and after a lot of practice, I've learned many lessons, one being, don't schedule your whole teaching to base off of a pop cultural reference. So I'm still not perfect in teaching at all, but as I invest in my strengths, which my strengths are woo, communication, restorative, activator, and input, as I spend time learning and investing in those, 
I grow and I develop more every time. But not only that, the bonus of StrengthsFinder is that I find personal fulfillment along the way. So without further ado, how do we invest? What does it look like to invest in our strengths? Well, you can't really invest in anything if you don't fully understand it. It's like doTERRA, right? You can sign up for oils, um, but if you don't understand the compensation plan and you don't know to get on LRP, then you're not you're not getting the best benefits. All of our favorite parts of being in doTERRA require understanding the structure more than just the, the general basics. And that's very true with strengths too. You can know your top five, but until you really understand how they work for you and how they play out, they're not really going to be working for you at all. So what I kind of the, the illusion I think for this is this, that knowledge, there's a distinct line between knowledge and revelation. So like if you're suffering from terrible allergies and you have the knowledge that if you take a tries that maybe your symptoms are going to be alleviated, that's not actually going to bring you any relief. It's not until you take that, let it absorb into your system that then you actually feel and experience that same relief. My hope for each one of you is that through some of these practical applications, you're going to have some of those revelations, some of those aha moments where you see how your strengths actually work. Because if you're like me and you've taken dozens of personality tests, sometimes it's just in that moment when you read the results, you're like, oh yeah, that's good, that's me. But does it play out in your everyday as you're going about your tasks, as you're planning, as you're strategizing? Do you think about those things? I, I never did until I had a moment where the rubber really hit the road with strengths. And so that's what we're, that's what we're doing today is to get into that place of understanding and application. So we're just going to jump right in. The first way to really understand a really good kind of first step to understanding is this right here. So each of the 34 themes of strength is broken down into four categories, executing strengths, which are strengths that help you get a job done. Second is influencing strengths. Um, it's people how, how now, who are able to take charge, speak up. It's, it's kind of like the people who are able to rally the troops with the vision. Next is relationship building strengths. This is all about teams and about people working together well. And then finally, strategic thinking strengths. Strategic thinkings are like the how. So the executing people make it happen. The strategic people know the means and kind of gather that information to make sure that the task is accomplished to its best capacity. So some of these strengths kind of are no brainers. Like it's obvious that maybe like a, gift, like a strength like harmony is gonna be good for relationship building. But some of them are surprising, like adaptability. You might think that adaptability maybe would be an executing strength but it is actually based in relationships. So I'd encourage you to take some time kind of looking and identifying where your strengths are, which categories they exist in, which categories you maybe don't have any strengths in. For me, I love people and everything I've ever wanted to do involved being with people and like relating to people. And yet I have no relationship building strengths. And that was really a huge shock to me until I realized that actually I see how that plays out. I'm very restorative and it's because I love people and I see the things in their life that could be fixed and I want to help them. But my focus is on fixing the problem, not on the person themselves, which in life, that's not going to be a great thing because it's the person that I need to be caring about. So even though I don't have that strength there, that awareness that that's not there helps me understand myself better so that I can grow in that and make sure that I actually care about the people that I'm trying to help bring restorative action to. Does anyone have any questions, you know, just based on kind of this, uh, this chart right here? I think we're good so far. Cool. We're just gonna keep I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. So here we go. Here are some practical ideas 
for understanding your strengths. Um, I wish we had like a week together that we could just camp out and do all these activities together and discuss them. Um, but I'll just put the ball in your court to take some of this initiative on your own. The first thing that's really helped me is um, after you take the test to look at your theme reports and insight guide that they give you um, and write down what resonates. Um, I'd say most of the time I agree with everything that's there or sometimes I'm like double underlining things. Yes, that's totally me. Um, just kind of giving yourself a moment to see how that actually does resonate with you. But not, this doesn't necessarily always create the full picture like maybe someone who's introverted versus being extroverted might see some of these play out differently so taking some time to kind of really go through that and write down some of your observations can be really really beneficial or the other thing is how you see your strengths interacting together i will give you an example um, an activator someone who like loves like taking thoughts and putting it into action, getting things started and kind of rallying people behind a vision. An activator achiever, someone who loves getting things done, is gonna start something and they're gonna push through to complete it. But that person's gonna be completely different from an activator harmony. They're gonna be super excited about starting something. They're gonna get a team together and enjoy working together. And you know what? If that never gets accomplished, they might not care because that wasn't the point for them. So I encourage you to take some time to see what on that insight sheet resonates with you, where you see that those things interact and intersect because you're really the only person who knows what that looks like. I'll give you an example of this. Um, a few years ago, I had a friend call me kind of out of the blue. She was co-teaching a class of college age students with a friend of hers and there was a situation that came up where a student was coming in late every day to class and he kind of had a hoodie and he'd pull it up over his head and sit in the back of the class away from everyone else and just like be on his phone. She, so she went to the co-leader and said, hey, like this behavior is completely unacceptable. Like we need to talk to him. And her co-leader, Will, he said, hey, he even, he even cited StrengthsFinder. He was like, actually, like I'm really spending time trying to develop him outside of the class. Um, and he's going through something really, really difficult right now. And so I think he just needs, he needs some empathy. He needs someone to kind of understand his circumstance. Well, Jenna, my friend, she also had empathy and developer. And so she didn't understand why two people with the same strengths were looking at the same situation completely differently. One was saying, hey, cut him some slack. She was saying, no, this isn't right. Well, when we looked at it, if you see her third strength, is consistency which says it's people are very keenly aware of the need to treat everyone the same and they delineate value based on that that idea of fairness so the empathy that they were feeling will was feeling empathy for the student who was having a hard time Jenna was feeling empathy for the whole rest of the class who adhered to the expectations of classroom behavior She's feeling for the teacher who's trying to teach, but there's clearly someone disengaged in the back. So for her, just this understanding of consistency, it brought total clarity to her. And interestingly enough, nothing was done about the situation. She was fine to let it go because just simply the understanding of why she felt the way she did let her feel freedom to trust Will with his decision, which is really neat. So this is why for me, it's so important that we take time to understand because it can bring such clarity to our motivations, to our emotions, and to why we approach things the way we do. And from that, she was able to then just continue to move forward, developing her students the way she wanted to, which she's incredibly gifted in. And just joined our team. Hey. Um, so going back to that list, the next suggestion I would make to you is to meet with someone who knows you really well and just basically share your strengths with them and kind of what they, the general gist of what they mean. And then get feedback from them about how they see that play out in your life. The reason why this can be really, really valuable is sometimes it's very obvious. Like for me, it talks about woo people loving to meet strangers. Like 
Yes, I'm always trying to chat with people behind me in line at the grocery store. <laughs> I can tell when they hate it, <laughs> but it's just, it's just my bent. So when I read Woo, there was no mystery there. I was like, yes, that's me. But sometimes there's strengths like connectedness, which it's like one of those secret strengths that I really wish I had because I think it's so cool. Um, but connectedness is where you see relationships between people and events and things. There's no coincidences. Everything in your mind is like this web of connections, either happening or waiting to happen. And I've met a ton of people who are like, I don't get it. I don't see it. The reason they don't see it is because this is like the glasses that they wear to the world that they've worn since they were three. It's just how they see things. And so when they said and expressed, I don't see it, the people who knew them well are like, are you kidding? Of course we see it. We see it in everything you do. You're always pulling out movie references or you see people and they remind you of other people. And so for them, that's when that light bulb came on. Oh, that must be part of who I am. So I encourage you to do that. It's great. And it's never bad to let people into understanding of how you work because that's to your benefit too, because then they can have greater understanding and that always builds relationship. Um, another thing we can do is if you're more of like a tactile learner, um, sometimes things don't really click until you're doing something physical, but to draw like a physical representation of how you see your strengths. I'll, I'll give you an example. I did this and it was so powerful, um, but mine I think got lost in the move. So instead of redrawing my poor drawings, I'll show you another example that's a little bit clearer than mine was. So this gentleman saw his strengths as like a rocket ship where he has number one strength was belief, which your belief is that you have a set of core values that dictate all the things that you do, the way you see the world, you see people, every decision you make is driven by your core values of belief. And so for him, that was the body of the rocket ship. Everything of substance in his life came from his beliefs. But then responsibility and harmony were like the stabilizers on the side. Every, all of his beliefs still had to make sure that they were grounded by harmony, making sure the people around him were in good relationship with one another and people were seen and heard. And then responsibility was the stabilizer that made sure that the things he believed in, he was responsible to bring to completion. And strategic kind of directed the way that, that took as he learned and as he, he used his, his analytical skills to help direct his efforts to the places that they should go. And then I like this activator. His activator is like the power boosters behind it. It's what ignited him, it's what fired him up to power that rocket of belief. It's a pretty cool picture. And yours doesn't have to be the same. Um, it doesn't have to be one that all interacts together. But, um, you know, it could, it's just something physical that helps you kind of just look at it and say, yeah, that is me. Amy, I saw that you said something, but you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, I think that's really powerful to have an image. I think to put it on your vision board, well, maybe not on your vision board, but somewhere where you can see it on a regular basis. I think that could be really cool. Yes. And, you know, if you're a, if you're a writer, I, I love writing. I think that's part of my communication. Sometimes I journal, and as I'm journaling afterwards, I'm like, yes. That is how I feel yeah, yeah. about physically that's expressing cool. it can help your brain absorb it more. Yeah, that's cool. How are we doing so far, everyone? <laughs> A little quiet. We don't have any questions yet, so <laughs> I think we're just taking it all in. <laughs> really cool. When I get excited, I just like pound it out. So. <laughs> well, I'm loving this, so... Okay, good. You know, just on the strengths roller coaster with me. You think it's recorded, so you can go back and like slow it down one and a half times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And then the last suggestion is um, that you can meet with a coach. Um, Gallup has extensive lists of strengths finder coaches who um, I spent some time with a coach and it was powerful. Even just kind of their experience and the questions that they could ask. Um, can really help give you some added insight and just kind of see things from a more um, objective point of view. Um, and I'm going to share at the end how if you are interested in doing any further coaching, I'm going to offer you 
a little bonus here. So I would be delighted to do that, especially through the lens of doTERRA. All right, those are, those are my, so those are my practical tips for ways you can understand your strengths better. We're still going good. We're gonna move on to the next step. So we talked about on that, I'm gonna go back here. So we talked about investment and we said that we couldn't really invest until we understood. So we've understood it. Well, now we're actually gonna to get to how we can invest. So once you feel like you kind of have a grasp of your strengths and, and what they look like in your life, we have to kind of deposit them into those accounts. Um, earlier, I had you think about where there was room for most growth, which was my unfair, tricky, trick question. Um, but the truth is, the room for greatest growth for you in your business and in your lives is in these areas of strength. And so I want you to imagine each strength as like a little bank account. And daily, we need to be taking responsibility to make little shifts and take proactive action to invest, to put things into those accounts. At first, it actually is going to feel like work. It's not going to be natural. But as you do it, it's such a freeing way to live your life. I, I guarantee that it's going to become exciting. Because instead of dreading your to-do list, when you get life doing the things that you invest in, it becomes natural. What we can't expect is that the perfect job or the perfect opportunity, the one that's perfectly tuned to our strengths, will fall in our laps. We need to curate that reality for ourselves. And it's absolutely possible. So here's another activity for you to do another time. I wish we had time to do it now all together and chat about it because it's super fun. Um, but I'd encourage you to write down your strengths and then brainstorm how you could use each one to breathe fresh life into your business, your personal life too. But we're going to kind of focus on doTERRA. Sometimes we approach our action plans like what do I need to do next when I'm building um, from what we think the business needs. But you actually might find new life if instead you think about what you can bring to it. So I'm gonna show you an example of what I did for this with some of my strengths. So three of my strengths are input, woo, and activator. So the, the input strength is, is people who have a craving to know more. They, they like to collect and archive lots of information and about lots of different things. Something kind of captures their attention and they just dive in deep. And so a couple years ago, um, I got really intrigued by cocktail making. My husband bought me a class, like a bartending class to learn how to do it. And I just thought it was so neat and so cool and so interesting. And so recently I started doing cocktails and oils classes where I actually did a, a sip and spray. So we used oils and cocktails because I don't know where y'all are, but in Texas, we like our little cocktails when we have girls get togethers. So we had little girls get togethers. We made Moscow mules with a little bit of ginger in it. Um, but then we made cleaning supplies. It was a blast. So I was able to use my input, the, the knowledge I'd learned about making cocktails and bring it together with oils. And I just had a blast. Next is um, as a woo person. So again, woo people, they love to break the ice and make connections and they don't know a stranger in the world. So I, when I meet people, I often hear within the first three or four minutes of meeting them about their health needs somehow comes up. And uh, so something that I can do in, to invest in that is to be really good about carrying samples and staying really well stocked with my oils. Because that window, especially if I don't meet them and then run into them all the time, that window can close very, very quickly. And so because I've busted it open, I've, I've kicked it open because I've so desperately wanted to meet them, um, there's this great opportunity for me to share. And so I've learned that because of that, I need to be prepared. And I love it, especially when people are so surprised. 
I mean, airplanes, air, oh man, are y'all like this? I love the airplane because someone is sitting right, right next to me and they have to listen to me. <laughs> they have to talk to me. It's great. Um, and so I can't tell you the number of times I've shared on the airplane, um, partially because I don't want them to get me sick, but also because here I am chatting with you and giving you oils. It's, it's wonderful. Nothing brings me more joy. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, strangers, <laughs> horror. <laughs> Um, the other idea with Wu is I was thinking, how can I connect with other, other business owners? How can I meet and expand the people I'm interacting with? And we had the idea for a vendor fair, um, finding lots of people who have their own businesses and our neighborhood organized a little vendor fair where we all kind of came and offered up what it was that we did, um, either a creative outlet or, um, like for me, for doTERRA. And it was awesome getting to meet people, hear about why they do what they do, but then getting to share what I love. And then uh, finally, another idea that I had for being an activator, which means you love kind of getting things started, turning thoughts into action, um, is brainstorming with my downline what excites them and helping them activate themselves. It's not, activators aren't just excited about activating their own passions, but activating the passions of others. And so I thought, wow, what a great way to develop my downline is to say, hey, what are you passionate about and how can we get that started? And that's been really fun as well. So those are just a couple examples of my strengths. But I encourage you, look at yours, look at your top five, and instead of what does my business need, think, what can these strengths continue? And you might find that you have a creative idea that you never thought of, or maybe no one has ever thought of. And you're going to find a new avenue that not only works for you, but that excites you and provides that longevity for if things get hard. So in light of this, I want to talk just briefly about others' expectations. This is very, very real unless you have a mentor like Amy with individualization who I, I made a joke, like I made a joke with her about how when we mentor people, you don't want to create a copy of yourself. And she laughed and I thought, well, of course she would never dream of doing that because that's the last thing a person with individualization would do. But someone who doesn't have individualization would think, well, I found success in doTERRA. This is the way and the steps that I did it. And so I'm going to teach you how to do the same. And nothing could be farther from the truth. There's no quicker way for you to burn out and self-destruct than trying to do something that's not authentic to you, especially in a business where you're the one driving the vehicle. So like, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I was just starting, just kind of the idea of the make and takes had just come out. And even though I love teaching, I love teaching specific things, things I'm passionate about. And what I really love teaching is things I love that then I can pass on a seed and see people take it and grow even beyond me. And so teaching like a doTERRA like 101 class was not something I was excited about. But this make and take where it was like, hey, I live a toxin-free lifestyle where my son can lick the bathtub and it's not going to hurt him after I clean it and it might even help him. Why don't we do the same for your house? So I told someone that was mentoring me that that was something I was excited about. And she was like, oh, you know, make and takes actually are more for down the road. It's kind of after you've already set that basics. So you really should invest in 101s first, like, like the basics of oils first. And I was like, Oh, okay. I, I guess I'll wait. Well, that class never happened because I didn't, I was overwhelmed. I was new. I didn't think that I had the skills for that. I needed to do that make and take because I think what that would have done is it would have gotten me comfortable with teaching a class in that way. And that 101 information, it would have come alongside. And so I think I could have used the momentum from the piece I was passionate about to help fill in all the gaps. So like Amy talks about in her webinar, we need a mentor who's gonna encourage us to be the best version of ourselves as the catalyst for our own success. 
and we as mentors need to do the same. So we're actually planning a follow-up webinar that's going to focus specifically on how to mentor others through their strengths um, and how to identify the strengths in others and how to develop those in them. There is not just one right way to build this business. In fact, I would guess, Amy, not a single person has ever done it exactly the same way. But if we spend our time trying to replicate someone else's process, like I said, you're going to burn out before you ever reach your goals. But if you know what excites you and motivates you and you press into that, the rest will follow. And that's why we have mentors who encourage us to do those things. So I'm going to give you a brief example of, let me just make sure. Yeah. A brief example from, from my life when I, way back in the day, um, one of the last jobs I had, I worked in the personnel department in a nonprofit in Colorado. There were about 100 employees, and they all volunteered in multiple different positions simultaneously to cover the needs of the organization. And my job was every day to make sure that every job was covered and that every person knew where they were scheduled. It was a really large and daily undertaking, and it required strategic decisions and effective communication which according to StrengthsFinder, I do have communication and I had restorative, so I see problems and I see how to fix it. So this job was actually not innately natural for me, but it did have some elements that used my strengths. So I thought, yeah, I, I could probably do this. So I sat at a desk for seven hours a day, pouring over spreadsheets and making phone calls to alert the staff to the changes that were being made. And most of the time they were not happy to get a phone call from me. So I heard disappointed voices on the other end of the phone. And as the weeks went on, I grew more and more discouraged. I started to dread going to work. I was always able to complete the task, but it, it was like pulling teeth. And worst of all, for the woo person, if you remember, I couldn't stand that people resented hearing my voice. When I said, oh, it's Shay, I always heard, Oh, because they knew I was going to tell them <laughs> to do something they didn't want to do. So I could have easily thought one of two things. Wow, I just need to tough this out. This is just how it is. This is not a job I like, but I have to do it. Or I need to quit. Like, this is not for me. In the midst of this scenario, very luckily for me, um, I was preparing to do a week-long strengths coaching seminar for a leadership school. Here I am preparing to tell them that when they run into a situation like this to focus on their strengths. Maybe I should do that. So like I said, my number one strength is woo and it stands for winning others over. So when you, it's when you thrive on meeting people and breaking the ice and gaining their trust and getting them on board with your vision, it's, it's like nothing excites me more than meeting people face to face and having a great interaction and walking away feeling happy. But I was sitting behind a desk talking statically over a phone. So I asked my manager, hey, if I finish my work on time, if I get it done early, instead of calling on the phone, do you think I could walk around and meet people and ask them? She was like, yeah, sure. My job was absolutely revolutionized. I got to greet them and hug them and ask them how their day was. And in true Wu style, get to request the changes I needed, but say it in such a way that they, they saw and how much I appreciated it. And so instead of feeling like they were being barked orders over at a phone, instead they felt like they were doing me a huge favor that I deeply appreciated. And I did appreciate it. So all of a sudden, this job that I hated became so energizing. It was really one of the best work experiences I've ever had. And the parts of the job that were previously burdensome for me weren't burdensome anymore because it was just part of this greater work that let me walk around and chat with friends. But if you notice, no, no manager could know that about me in most situations. And so it was up to me to understand myself and what I needed and to make that shift slightly, just a slight change to change the circumstance completely. And that 
I mean, that's what's so cool about doTERRA is we have that, we have that flexibility. We are our own managers, so we can make those changes at any time. So this is what we need to do when we invest, is to be proactive. Make some of those mental shifts. And then practice. Put yourself in situations to practice engaging in your strengths. Trial and error is going to be your best friend. You might not do it perfectly. In fact, spoiler alert, you're not going to do it perfectly because you haven't spent all those hours yet honing it to create that opportunity for perfect performance. But the benefit is that you're actually going to enjoy the process. Because as you're doing it, you're investing in your strengths, and that's where the areas for most growth exist. All right, we're about to jump into to the next topic. Does anyone have any questions based on any of that? I think we're good so far. Okay. Um, Amy says her top five are command, developer, discipline, activator, and belief which are powerful. And then Leilani, she says that minor empathy, connectedness, relator, input, and developer. Whoa, lots of relationship building. Lots things. of relationship, yeah. And one strategic, yeah. Read, read the first set again. Hers are command, developer, discipline, activator, and belief. Wow. Woo. Yeah, those are powerful. Tells me yeah, they both are it's very interesting. Yes. That's the cool thing is they're so different, but I can see totally how both of those strengths are so conducive to creating optimum setup for success within a business like this. So really neat. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Leilani, I, I, this is something that she added on to hers. She was just saying that she's great at understanding other people's needs, but on a business level, it's not the strongest. Um, she was just pointing out that hers are all relationship building and one strategic thinking. But I love how you pointed out to me when we're working together is sometimes we're using our other strengths to work and say, um, you know, a strategic thinking mode, even though it might be relationship building, we might be using our, our relationship building as a strategic, you know, as a strategy <laughs> yeah. you know, working for us. I, I think that that's really brilliant. And actually, I'm really glad you asked this or that you brought that up because um, in the organization I worked with previously, because mm -hmm. it was such a people-oriented organization, um, many times this happened. I actually worked with many people who all their strengths were in relationship building, and they were like, wow, I don't have anything that helps me get anything done. And I actually don't have anything that's really influencing, and they got discouraged. But let me tell you, that's absolutely not true because what it is is that you care about people. That's your number one priority. And chances are you know people who expect that things get done. Like you have a boss who expects work from you. And because you care about them, you care now about getting that thing done. Mm -hmm. So what's so cool is you're still getting the task done just like an executor does. Yeah. But the motivation is because you care about a person. Right. And what is this business all about? Caring about people. So I just want to like nip that little lie in the bud because yes. that's absolutely not true. Your, your caring about people is what is going to help you. Like, like I said with Amy, like Amy doesn't have any strengths in influencing. <laughs> I'm not an influencer. <laughs> but, okay. Now we all know that's ridiculous, right? I know. <laughs> From the first moment I talked to her, just her, her passion and her <clears throat> discernible care for others makes her influential. You want to hear what she has to say because you sense she cares about you. So isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Her relationship building strength of visualization ends up becoming influential. So yeah, I think that's so much fun. Just it's really great. So that, the categories are good in that they help you understand your motivation, um, but... And, and why maybe, so for the relationship building people, it might be, there's a deadline. Um, how can I think about this? Okay, let's, let's give an example with like BOGO, right? So <laughs> BOGO week and the deadline's coming, you need to submit the order or you're not gonna get it. And you have someone who you're, you know wants that oil. 
So you're caring about them, you're texting them and you're like, hey, I know this oil, but maybe you didn't get a hold of them in time. And so you maybe put that order on yours for yourself because you actually put precedence on the relationship and on the person. That was more important than the actual deadline and making sure, instead of saying, oh, too bad you didn't hit the deadline, which maybe who's someone who's deadline oriented be like, oh, sorry, you missed it. Instead, maybe you even sacrificed for yourself because you're like, oh, but I care so much about them and they were going to miss that deadline. So I did it for you. Mm-hmm. I hope that kind of makes sense. It that- totally does. It's nice to put it into to real life scenarios <laughs> and mm-hmm. how they could potentially play out. Yes. So yeah. That's a great yeah. question. We have a lot of people chiming in on their strengths. Should we leave this towards the end or do you want to hear them? Um, uh, up, up to you. Oh my gosh. Is it really 8.50? Holy cow. We're just... Wait, it, it's, it's totally up to you. <laughs> um, let me... Let me, let me do this last thing about weakness okay. because I think it might help okay. and then at the end we'll go over. And if okay. you guys are okay, I don't mind going slightly over. Um, okay. So we can, we can go from there. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. So here we go. Addressing weaknesses. So when we talk about weaknesses, there's actually two different areas that we're talking about. There are practical gaps, places where you don't have certain strengths, kind of like we were talking about. Maybe you don't have categories of strengths. Um, But then there's also saboteurs of the strengths you do have. And this is places where your strengths either have natural consequences or when like insecurity or lack of character or simply lack of awareness causes a strength to become misguided. We're going to talk about both of these. Um, and I'm, that's why I'm excited to be talking to y'all because I'm never more excited to talk about weaknesses with doTERRA people because it can be daunting to explore it, but this is the job and this is the place to figure out how to leverage those things to the, to your best ability. So get pumped about your weaknesses, everyone. So let's first talk about gaps. Um, often we're aware of our gaps, like Maybe if you are one of those relationship building people, you know that maybe you're not the person in the, in the crowd to speak up and everyone gets quiet. Like um, the gal who chimed in and said she has command. When she walks in a room, everyone knows it and she could whisper and chances are everyone listens. Um, so you might know where some of those gaps are. Um, but these are the places where the task feels arduous, exhausting, and stressful. This is the opposite of how a strength makes us feel. Um, Even if we're tired in our strengths, we feel excited, we feel success, and we feel kind of bolstered in our tiredness. The other is what comes when we are forced into tasks that don't utilize or deposit into our strengths. So maybe it's the teaching piece. Maybe you love everything about doTERRA, you're great at building relationships and sharing, but when it comes to teaching, you just, it's just not your wheelhouse. Maybe it's social media. Maybe you're like, all these young people are doing social media and everyone says it's what I have to do, but that is not me. So I'm going to share. Oh, wait, this is it. <laughs> Keely's on. She, she just saw my, my next slide. Um, but yeah, so maybe you'll notice that the, like some of you mentioned that there are categories that you don't have strengths that exist. For me, like I said, I don't have any strengths in relationship building. And this is just good for me to be aware, to be aware that I have to keep people in mind as I'm going about tasks and as I'm trying to be motivational and influential. Something we're going to talk about in the next webinar is how a great way to fill those gaps is collaboration. That's why doTERRA is a team. And okay, that's why our team like rocks. It's because that's what we're so great at is working together and collaborating together. Um, And not everyone has that. And so that's what we're going to talk about next time. But we're going to talk about how we can fill those gaps in the meantime. Another place we have gaps sometimes are circumstantial gaps. Maybe you're working a job. And so your gap is that you don't have a lot of extra time to invest. Um, So I'm going to use my 
Aquarian as an example, and she's here, Keely. Um, so Keely was experiencing some health issues that were preventing her from doing some things in the traditional way. Like hosting classes at her house just wasn't the most ideal way for her. And she found that actually she pretty much built her way up to silver doing one-on-ones, which maybe wasn't the way that others had taught her or ways that she'd seen other people do it, but she knew this is what works for me. And Keely has communication, woo, adaptability, relator, and context. So she's incredible about seeing people's needs, relating to them. You know what? You don't have a lot of money. That's fine. I didn't either, but your health is a priority. She's so great at meeting each person where they were. And because of that, she built her whole business that way. But the other thing I'm going to talk about is Keely's more entertaining gap was that she was really great at social media. She had lots of social media outlets and she wanted to be able to take those beautiful pictures that we've all seen maybe on, on Pinterest that had the beautiful background and the oils against the white. And so she was trying to figure out how she could take some of those pictures too. But she realized it just wasn't in her wheelhouse. And so she did what I think is maybe one of the most genius things I've ever seen. And she launched this page <laughs> called Oils with Crappy Pics. <laughs> Excuse my language there. But I love it. <laughs> this was brilliant. And this is Keely as a relator, too. Because one thing I love about Keely is that she's always willing to be vulnerable and real. She doesn't put this facade of like, my life is perfect and everything is wonderful. And if you come join my team, it'll be wonderful too. She's like, hey, here I am in the dirty bathroom doing what I have to do. But this concept is so appealing. It's so her, it's her using her strengths of communication to reach people who this is the type of message that they want. This is the one that they can relate to. And so she didn't feel like she could create those beautiful pictures, but she did something that worked for her that covered that gap and actually probably reached a greater scope than putting a beautiful picture in the sea of beautiful pictures that already exist. So I love her creativity and it's a perfect example. So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about gaps, but now I want to talk just briefly about the saboteurs. Um, oh, before I go to that, I'll just give you a little bit of background. So again, this is where the natural consequences or insecurity or lack of integrity can take what is a strength, but slightly misguide it. Some of them are really obvious, but I, I, I can tell you that I know of saboteurs that exist for every single category of strength. Um, and so to, to give you some examples, I'm just going to bare my soul here for you <laughs> and show you my strengths and some of the saboteurs that I've identified for myself. Um, I'm actually not going to read them all because I, I want to respect our time as much as possible. But so if you look over here, these are my strengths. And so a restorative person is really good about figuring out what's wrong and how to solve it. But the saboteur here is that I can have a tendency to want to fix people. It's, it's not the best way for, for restorative to play out, and it can actually hurt relationships. And let's talk about woo really quick, too, um, winning others over. The consequence of being a woo person is that it can cause deep insecurity. If you feel like there's someone who doesn't like you, you can fixate and obsess on why they don't like you, and it can make you forget about everything else. It used to wreck me for days. I'd lose sleep if I felt like someone answered a text like without a smiley face. <gasps> they don't like me. What did I do? And that seems silly to some of you, but to a woo person, that struggle is real. Um, but also people pleasing. Just compromising your own values and self to make others happy and make others like you, it's a real consequence. So um, if you see some of them are, are a little bit more sinister, like communication, the saboteur is the temptation to be manipulative. You can communicate in such a way that subtly kind of influences someone to think or feel something. Um, but then some of them are, are less ominous, like input, difficulty prioritizing. Input people, they love gathering information and they can get kind of fixated on something and then instead of putting priority on the things that are really important, they'll spend time doing other things. So, 
I'm just kind of cutting, seeing where I can cut down some stuff here so we can get to some of y'all's questions. Um, but yeah, kind of like I said, with restorative, I see that in myself that um, when I'm, so I'll give an example. I have a really sweet gal in my downline and she doesn't have great follow through. She's great in intentions. Um, and with her, I, I could see a hundred things that she could do differently and I want to fix it. I want to fix all the things and tell her what to do and give her an action plan. But for me as a restorative person, if I really want to mentor her through that strength, or I have two options, I could say, well, don't be restorative. Don't try to fix her, just go along. But that's not me using my strengths. So one thing I do with her is I remind myself the best way to help fix the problems that she's facing with her business is to just be alongside her as she figures out this part of the journey to offer information when she needs it, to check in with her and offer advice, show her things, just anything that I can, but she needs to go through it herself. And so I'm not going to be a good mentor to her if I'm constantly dissatisfied with her progress. Life's a journey. We all know that, but that's hard for a restorative person to accept sometimes. So with, with Wu, I'll just talk about this briefly. Wu and doTERRA is like a double-edged sword. I mean, I can meet someone and engage and hear about their health issues, like I said, in a second. But then I hit this hard wall of dilemma. You, maybe like me, have had someone reach out to spend time with you, and then you discover they're trying to sell you something. That feeling of like, I thought I had a friend, but they were, they were like using me? For me, nothing kind of cuts that relationship deeper than that. And so that's my fear is I don't want to offend anyone. And so it has kept me back from sharing. But what's crazy is that shuts off my woo. And woo people are actually really, really good at not being salesy. That's what they're awesome at. So it's interesting that this saboteur keeps me from using the thing that would actually compensate for that problem anyway. So I just need to remind myself doTERRA is a gift. I'm being selfish if I don't share this. And I hone my skills in communication so that they don't feel that pressure, but so that I'm still offering that thing that, man, when you offer something like that, what, what better thing than to offer that hope to build relationship, which for me as a woo is important. So this, this whole process is knowing yourself identifying your weaknesses, and then leveraging your strengths, it's a learned process. It takes quite a bit of time. But when you do, I know you're going to notice and experience new freedom, not just in your business, but in your life and relationships too. I can't even tell you how many times I've like butted heads with my husband only to find out it's the values of our strengths clashing. And so as we talk about it and work that through, I mean, we find greater freedom and we're better together because of it. That's cool. So there it is. So we have a question from Terry. She's asking, where can we find more information about Saboteur? Um, actually, that's, it, it might be out there, but that's something I came up with myself. Put together. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So you can find more information through me. <laughs> something, I awesome. love, something I love talking about. So yeah. Awesome. Do you want, do you want question? Is this Q and a time? It is here. It is. Okay. We're here. You guys, <laughs> what do you want to know? Do you want to pick Shay's brain? This is your, this is your chance. Um, maybe what we could do is just offer just a couple of examples of, we did a couple already of people's Top five strengths. Oh, Jenna says that she'd like to know more about um, saboteurs as well. Okay. Um, does anyone have a specific question about it? Because I could talk for days. <laughs> it's a really interesting topic because, you know, sometimes, you know, weaknesses can be our blind spots, you know, and so it's tricky. <laughs> and, and it really is. I think the trickiest part is that the saboteur makes us think that the strength is bad and it's tempting to shut it down, which is the opposite of what we need to do. Right. 
Right. Talking, we talk about mindset all the time. And like, that's what it is. A lot of the saboteur is just shifting mindset. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Maria is asking, um, how about where can we get information on the weakness side of our strengths? Now I know, I know that on the insight cards, there's a, what do they call it? I think they call it the barrier to your strength is what they, yeah. they have it listed as, but what, what other resources are there? Shay? Um, <laughs> that's something as far as I'm aware of that I developed too. Yeah. Um, I've, I've read quite a few, quite a few books. Um, I'll, I'll show you this one. This one is actually one we'll talk about in the next webinar. It's called. Strength I love Space. this one. Yep. I've got that uh, one. The world. It's really good. And actually for those of you that find your strengths in certain categories, this will bring a lot of freedom to you because what they do is each section is leaders who are at the top of their game highly influential who have all of their strengths primarily in one category or different categories. And so it, it talks about how they, how they find success in the midst of whatever their strengths are and leverage their weaknesses that way. So it's kind of a big yeah. topic, but yeah, it is a big topic. Yeah. My, I think what was most insightful for me and I've got that book too, and I really like it. Um, but the insight cards are really great. If you don't already have them, Maria, I would encourage you to get them. Yeah, so that, that taught me a lot. And then you can kind of dive a little deeper as you look at each one individually. Yeah. And then yes. um, in, in there, they have like the, in your printout too, they have like suggestions for action plans and those often address. Right. Yeah, those are really good. Um, Leilani says that she paid for the full test um, and it had a list of your weaknesses or what you were least strong in. So I guess if you have your top 34, um, that right there gives you a lot of information. Like for me, woo is on my number 34 for me. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I, I think I took the question a different way. So yes, if yeah. you want to find out like, oh, where are the, the places that I really, it now would be a great time to do that because of that sale. And again, I, I guess Amy said this, I didn't, I, I get no kickback from anything doTERRA. I, I do this purely for the love. So yeah that if you were interested in kind of where your strengths fall and delineate, um, taking that full test right, right now would be a good opportunity to do that. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate it because, um, you know, the top five are good and it gives you a lot of information, but really everything that I've um, read and understand about strengths is that we really play the most in our top 10. So, um, opening up the, the rest, even if you've already done the five, all you have to do is, is log in and, and unlock the rest and it's totally worth it. Yeah. And um, if you, if you don't take the time to do that, the more you learn about strengths, the more you just see the ones, you know, resonate with you. Like yeah. it's called competition. My secret number six, because I cover my deep competitiveness with a, a veneer of woo, but man, I want to <laughs> win <I wanna laughs> all the time. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Do you want to do maybe a couple of examples of top fives and, and just yeah. give you a really quick, quick coaching or sure. put you on the spot? <laughs> um, okay. So Levy has listed here as her strengths input. Okay. Give me a second. Yeah. Input. Yep. Empathy. Empathy. Learner. Learner. Intellection. Into ooh. Oh, this is really enter I'm gonna put my nerd glasses on, just kidding. <laughs> and lastly, developer. <laughs> I can relate to these because I've got these in my top ten too. Nice. And I've got relater. <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, those are good, Livy. That's really neat. Um, well, what I see here initially mm. is this is incredibly like people centric. Um and with developer, I don't know if, you, if you've got a, a team, but a developer really loves to see the potential in others. Um, but it sounds like you, you might really even learn, you enjoy learning about other people and how to develop them. Intellection is when you just really get stimulated by intellectual discussion and kind of hashing things through with people. But that's an interesting combination because often when I see intellection, it's with people who are very strong and influencing and so they can really intimidate people with their intellection but yours comes from a place of developer and empathy um and so 
it seems like maybe, okay, going down a limb here, it seems like you may, might even make a science of people. You love figuring out what makes them tick. You love learning about how you can support them. And that I could see a potential downfall here. And one of that is, so a, a weakness is empathy with this high and this level of strategy. Um, I could see um, being burdened. Empathy, one of the, the weaknesses of empathy is that you take that on and you feel people's pain. But if you've learned about them and you know where they've come from and maybe you even know some like specifics behind what they're experiencing, um, th that could be potentially debilitating. Um, and so self-care, oh my gosh, I don't know. Am I going on a limb here? Self-care, I think would be really, I think self-care would be really be? important to you. Like you need to take care of yourself, girl. Like the same way you would tell someone else to take care of themselves, please do the same for yourself. Um, because in you being taking care of yourself and being cold, that's how you'll be able to continue to pour out. You can't fill from an empty cup. So wow. nice. Yeah. Oh, that's, pretty, that's like, pretty spot on. <laughs> I want to hear from you. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So, um, let's see, Kim was saying one of her leaders has also has positivity as her number one, like her, uh -huh. she's having a hard time with momentum and commitment and she doesn't really know quite how to help her. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I guess why, but so with that's a downfall of positivity is sometimes you're not focusing on like the hard realities or really challenging yourself, especially if whoever's mentoring you is really, it's like, I've got this idea. What a great idea. I bet you can do it. Awesome. It's like a positivity love fest, which for some people, that's all they really need. They just need someone to tell them they believe in them. Um, but if there's a lot of that, then maybe there's less of the rubber hitting the road. And so um, I think what I would encourage you to do is, again, not to shut it down, but like use your positivity to kind of go big with your dreaming. Like, what would it look like to do something I, I think is really awesome and maybe really out there? Because with the support you have, I think we're always amazed what you can accomplish when you actually try but sometimes we're held back because we think maybe we can't. Positivity people make a way. And it's partially because their positivity is infectious and they gather people around them naturally to make that thing come to pass. So I would say push yourself. Imagine, I don't know what your other strengths are, but um, I think if you can free yourself up to dream I think you'll be surprised what you can accomplish. But without that push, there isn't anything. I, again, I don't know your other strengths. There might not be anything driving that, that grit on the road, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's really good. Um, Leilani was saying that when, when she took the test and got her answers, she thought it was funny because she never thought that these were strengths. She just assumed mm -hmm. that everyone was like this. For example, empathy was her top is her top strength, and she struggled how she struggled she struggled understanding how people could say negative things, knowing it would affect oh, other other people. And understand that everyone's brain didn't work like hers, and I <laughs> isn't that the truth? And I think that's why I love this so much. Is that I think that's how we all are. It's it's really easy to just kind of to, to assume that, that people, people think the same way we do, but they don't. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's why not just understanding yours, but everyone's can give you this mutual appreciation, but mm -hmm. like a, a, a grace covering. Cause then when someone does something that an empathy person is like, how could you ever say something like that? Now you can say, okay, I have empathy to understand that you actually don't have empathy. And so I know you didn't mean that. <laughs> so <laughs> people, once they get past the fact that not everyone has empathy and they're just being evil, because that's such a, that's, that's why empathy people are like, wow, you're just a horrible person. It's like, okay, no, I've accepted. You just don't like me. Like, it's not there, guys. It's just not. So once you've accepted that, that, you know, 
joke I made wasn't on purpose, then you can say, oh, Shay, I feel for you. Because I could imagine what it might be like to not have empathy, but not really, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Kim says, um, thank you so much. She said her, others, her other strengths are connectedness, empathy, developer, adaptability. Totally. I totally see that in you, Kim. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. I, mean, I think all of these relationship building strengths, especially because doTERRA is so, and this team is so about helping each other out. Like to me, I have no doubt that you're absolutely an asset in your team. And that's like a power. I, I, I don't know why y'all are like that because relationship building strengths to me are so powerful because I don't have them. But I think it is. It's just the way you care for people. It's the way you love people. And it seems so normal. Mm -hmm. And often building people there, they're like, oh, I wish I could be influential. I wish I was more strategic. But really, the we strategy are. and the influence comes from the fact that you care so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Neat. So we, we do get there. We just use it in a different way. Yes, exactly. Wow. That's really cool. You know, tons yeah. of people could have the same exact job, but their motivation and the road they get to get there is all different. And that's really what it's about. Totally. Totally. Okay. Should we do one more? Sure. The baby's still quiet. So. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So Andrea says hers, her top five learner responsibility. Oh, hold on. Let me see. Oh, sorry. I'll slow down. Here. Learner. Responsibility. Responsibility. Achiever. Mm-hmm developer and input okay specific question or just that's it and those, those, <laughs> those are her top five um oh she oh it, she it's so funny because i scrolled up to get hers and she just posted what happens when you don't have any influence strengths um andrea i can tell you that i don't have any influence strengths either in my top five that's kind of what we we're talking about a second ago and that was the first thing that i brought up with shay she said so tell me we're doing this coaching together tell me what you want tell me something that you want to know or you want to get out of this and that was the first thing i asked her i was like i don't have any influence <laughs> how can i do this well if i don't have any influence and just like she was saying we use and pull from, draw from some of these strengths and we make some of these strengths function as an influencer, even though they might not be yellow. <laughs> yeah. So like responsibility is one where it's clear to everyone who has that. And there's influence and responsibility because people know, you know what, I want to get this done. I'm going to ask her because she always makes it happen. And that actually makes you very influential because it gives you a platform to help facilitate how that thing is achieved. Um, and I mean, developer too, when you have that unique ability to see what people need to grow in the next step, when someone's developing you, you give them a platform of influence. They kind of just naturally take that place. You listen to what they have to say because they have that insight and they're willing to work with you. So that influence is one rather than taken naturally, if that makes sense. So like, I'm a communication person, so that, that, that's influencing for me. But sometimes I don't necessarily even have the goods to back it up. I'm just good at being the face. For you, it's because of the goods that you have and are cultivating that people give you the platform. So it's there. It's just not as overt as maybe what you think an influential person looks like. So for you, I might encourage you to check this book out because you'll see how people win influence from every area of, of strengths breakdown. Yeah, so good. That's so awesome. Okay, well, let's go ahead and um, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up this conversation, but why don't you share with us next steps? Like, what does it look like to coach with you? And yeah. what are some things if people want to do that, how, how would they explore that with you? Yes. Yeah, so, well, the next thing you can do is you can check out the next webinar, which I think will be, I'm really excited. It was hard for me to like even <laughs> not go too far into that, but um, that really is going to be about teams and people. It's a completely different skill set, but it's important to know yourself first before you can really work on identifying and engaging with others. Um, but because we're on the same team, um, I'm offering a discount. So if you're interested in an hour 
strengths coaching session with me. And this is for you personally, or if you've, you've got some things on your team you'd like to talk through. Um, normally I charge a hundred dollars an hour, but I'm doing fifties. Um, so that, that would be, that looks like, um, you can go to my website, um, shaylee.com and just request a coaching session in the notes, say that you're, you're part of the team. And what that will look like is you'll send me your strengths and any specific questions that you have, but I'll just spend some time kind of looking, researching, gathering some observations, and then we'll just chat together about your goals and understanding yourself and anything specific that you're looking to help overcome. And we'll talk together about how we can do that through your strengths. Awesome. That's a great deal. I, I really enjoyed it. We, um, we did it just a few weeks ago and um, I learned, I learned so much from it. I think it's something that I could see myself coming back to repeatedly. Like once you kind of open up <laughs> Pandora's box, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but once you start to open it up, there's just so many different, it's like peeling layers of onions. I just feel like you can get, you go deeper and deeper and you start to look at it from different angles. And it's, it's just, it's a fascinating topic. I really, I really like this a lot. Yes, it's a rabbit hole. So for you input people, I'd encourage you channel your input into strengths because it's, it's a great fascination to want to continue to learn lots about. Yeah. Well, you're so gifted at it and we're so grateful for your time. This has been so much fun. Oh no. The fun has truly been all mine. Thank <laughs> you so much for the opportunity and, and for engaging with me in this. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, if there aren't any last minute questions here, we're going to go ahead and, um, Oh, what was the discount? So it's, it's half off. So it's normally a hundred per session, but it's 50. Is that right? Yep. Cool. And yeah. then if you know someone who's not on our team who is interested, um, but they're connected to you, I can do, um, I'll do 75, but cool. Um, anyone on our little web is, is 50. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's so generous of you. And it's, I, I agree. Um, I, Keely, I think it's totally worth it. <laughs> worth every penny. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And, um, and thank you, Shay, so much. I think you have to pass it back to me as host so I can, um, I don't think I can end it without having okay. it. Let's see. So take your cursor up to the top of your page and back then here. And then I think you hover your, your cursor next to my name. Oh yes, that's right. The three dots. There's like a, a little ellipses. Yeah. It's all you now. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll officially, <laughs> I'll officially say goodbye and thank you again, everybody. Thanks for joining us and thank you so much, Shay. And, and looking forward to part two. So I'm not sure when we're going to do that. Probably sometime in the fall. So keep an eye out. Cool. Okay. Thanks you guys. Bye. Bye.